We're looking at looping in Liquid today. So this is my cupcake page. And the first thing I want to do is apply an image filter. So all these images will be black and white. So this is the source code for the cupcake page. I'm iterating over a collection of cupcakes and printing out an image path for the source for the image, the type as a heading and a description. So I'm going to add a style tag to my image and I'm going to add the image filter here. So it's hyphen webkit hyphen filter um, and then I'm going to apply the grayscale filter at 100%. So that's made all my images black and white and I want to take this a step further. So instead of everything being black and white, I want to cycle through different filters. So the first image will be black and white, the second will be sepia, and the third will be inverted. And then that will just repeat itself. So this will be black and white, sepia, inverted. So I'm going to add a cycle here. And what a cycle does is it has multiple values that it will iterate over each time it's called. So first we'll create the cycle and then we'll add the values. So first it's grayscale, then it's sepia, then it's invert. So each time cycles called, it's going to output one of these values, which will insert it into the style tag. So now when I view the page, it's cycling over those image filters. Next, I want the cupcakes to be numbered. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Liquid gives me access to the current for loop, and then I can just access the index like that. So now they're numbered, and I can also start the sequence at zero. So I just add a zero to this, so it's index zero. And now they're zero indexed. The next thing I want to do is change the first and last cupcakes so the title is displayed inverted. So it's a black background on white text. So we've got our title here and I'll add an if statement inside the opening h2 tag. And we'll access our for loop again. So I want to check if it's the first or the last item. So with for loop, I can check if it's the first and then I'll add an or for loop dot last. So is it the first or is it the last? And if it is, I'm going to add a style tag to my H2 with a background of black and a color of white. So now the headings of the first and last items have been inverted. If we wanted to change this to the last three items instead of the first and the last, we could use an R index. And what an R index is, is how many items are left in the loop. So on the first item, the R index would be six. On the second, it would be five. And then on the last, it would be one. So we'll get rid of the OR. And we'll change this to if the R index is less than or equal to three. So that's going to get us the last three items, which you can see here. And I could use R index zero if I wanted that number to be zero indexed. I want to be able to hover over any heading and for it to tell me the total number of cupcakes that are available. So I could add a title to my H2 and then I could get the number of cupcakes in a number of ways. I could get it from the collection. So that would be site.cupcakes.length. But we've been using the loop, so let's use the loop. So I could use for loop dot length. And now hovering over these items, it'll come up with the total number of cupcakes, six cupcakes. 
Next I'll demonstrate continue and break inside loops. So continue will jump straight to the next iteration of a loop and break will jump out of the loop. So I'll demonstrate continue with the lemon cupcake. So we'll add an if statement here and check if the type is equal to lemon. And if it is, we're going to continue. So if it gets inside this if statement, it's going to hit the continue and then skip straight to the next iteration. So it won't execute any of this code here. And you can see that lemon is no longer there. This could also be achieved by surrounding the entire cupcake block in an if statement that says if it's not equal to lemon, then print out the cupcake. And we'll also demonstrate break here. So let's change continue to break. When it gets to the lemon cupcake, it falls out of the loop, so it doesn't print out the last two items. We can also make changes to how the for loops are executed. So let's try reversing the order. I'll get rid of my break statement, and we can just add reversed after our for loop. And now the output has been completely reversed. I can also add a limit here if I only want to display three items. And we can also add an offset which skips over the first x number of items. So we'll skip over the first three items. In some situations you might need to handle the case where your array is empty. So let's create an empty array called flavors and we'll create a for loop to iterate over that array. And we'll just output the flavor. So we can add an else to a for loop and that's the case where the array is empty and we'll just output there are no flavors. So it's hit the else statement and output there are no flavors. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.